Kwasi here. In today's video, I want to share with you how you can change your subconscious mind so that you can create real wealth in your life and how I did it for myself. Throughout this video, I want to share with you three main things that helped me from where I started being a broke 21 year old college student to now having a seven figure coaching business that's changed the lives of over 900 clients and how my subconscious mind was, how it is now and how I view money and how you can make this change for yourself. Stick around to the very end, let's go right ahead and get started. So if you know a little bit about me and my story, you know that when I got started off, I was a completely different person. And you can probably see that if you go back like a couple years on my YouTube channel, I still got my old videos up, but I always struggled with money. Like when I got started off, I would always struggle with money. I always viewed it as scarce. And I don't know where this programming came from. Maybe it was from my dad, maybe it was from my childhood, but I was always stingy, I was always holding on to money and I was always fearful of it. This stinginess I realize now came from a fundamental view that money is limited and scarce. And I personally believe it's like all the movies that I watched when I was younger and like how it's like noble to be poor, but evil to be rich. And because I believed and bought into all of that, I somehow thought in my life and I always strived like at some point, I was like, oh, you know, I shouldn't strive for money. No, money is evil. You know, all those rich evil people, they do bad things with money and they get spoiled, they get ruined. I just want to live a normal life, be like a scientist and lock myself in a dungeon and you know, do research and not get paid for it at all. That is the noble thing to do. But I didn't realize back then that deep down I did want to experience this abundance and I wanted to experience all of these things. But I was telling myself this story so I wouldn't have to put myself out there and be uncomfortable. The stories that I was telling myself was a way of me keeping myself in my comfort zone. And a lot of us do that. So just ask yourself this. If you could have all the good that you wanted in your life, if you could have your cake and eat it too, would you do it? If you could take all the good without the bad, would you take it? If yes, then why not? Why not strive for that? Why not strive to find a way where you can keep the good without the bad? Okay, that's what reality creation is. We're always trying to find a way to strive for the good without the bad. I realized that this attitude I had with money was hindering me in every single aspect of my life. Early on, I noticed that this was making me very like stingy with money and like holding on to money and I didn't want to buy nice things or like invest in myself. And that kept me stuck for a very long time. It's not just like the act that you're not doing, it's more the attitude. It starts to translate onto every single other area of your life. You're not freely giving, you don't help people, you're stingy with your time. And that makes you closed up. And when someone is closed up, they're not open to receiving. And when someone's not open to receiving, guess what? They're not gonna receive. They're not gonna receive all of the gifts that life has to offer, which is exactly what was happening with me. I was just very stagnant in my life. I was just like looking for little minimum wage jobs to just make enough money to get by. I remember the first big investment decision I was presented with was buying this $2,000 course and I didn't wanna buy it, so I was trying to find a way to pirate it. That's so toxic to your mentality and I just realized the place that I was coming from when I was doing this, I was like, all right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna find a way to get this for free. Ultimately, I did end up investing in it. It was a business course that taught me how to like start up my coaching business and get kickstarted. And ultimately, I did make the leap and make that decision and I saw more than three three quarters of my bank account get wiped out back then. And it was a very, very uncomfortable, very tough thing for me to do. But I did it with the right attitude and it yielded me great results. Money started to really flow into my life when I subconsciously changed that scarce view that I had towards it. So I wanna share with you the three big things that changed for me from who I was then to who I am today. So let's begin with number one. The number one big thing that allowed me to go from being that piss broke 21 year old college student who was barely getting by and holding on to every penny that he had to just now being able to freely spend without worrying about where money's gonna come from. Like I haven't had financial worries in a long time and I don't remember the last time I was worried about money. And I don't say this to brag, I just say this to say like that can happen for you too, but it begins with a change in attitude. So the number one thing that changed for me was my relationship towards money. I went from viewing it as something to be afraid of, from viewing it as something that's limited and scarce to viewing it as something that I love. When I view money, I can only feel love now because I can see the potential that it has to change someone's life, how this energy can flow to make changes happen. So when that attitude changed, more money came into my life. I was happier. You know, I started to become more joyful, more at ease with life, not so guarded all the time. So the attitude change towards money was also brought on by an attitude change towards life. Viewing life not as scarce and 
limited but abundant. And I started to realize like there's so much money out there that there's no reason that you can't be a billionaire and 10 of your other friends can't be billionaires and I can't be a billionaire all at the same time. There is so much money and so much abundance there to go around. Going from fear to love, viewing it from scarce to literally seeing it as unlimited. There is so much, there is enough for everyone out there. Number two was opening up the channel. What do I mean by this? What I mean by this is not being afraid to invest in myself, both time and financial wise. I know a lot of gurus who sell coaching programs tell you this, like, you know, you gotta, you gotta invest in yourself, that's what you gotta do, but there's literal truth in there. And a lot of people, they get jaded by past investments they've made because they got burned or they didn't get the immediate ROI that that program or the thing that they invested in, it promised, so they couldn't justify that investment. What I started to see was that whatever I invested in, not all of them yielded a direct ROI, but there was still a lesson that I learned from it. I've invested like three to five thousand dollars in coaching programs that I never even touched. I watched one module of and I just never even like went through it because I realized at that point that that's not what I needed. But I didn't cry about it and I was like, no, you know, I'm, I'm, I want a refund, I want my money back. No, I didn't fucking do that. I learned the lesson that I paid three thousand or five thousand dollars for, which was to be focused to be focused on what I did want to focus on. And if I change my mind in the future, I can go back to it if I can find the login credentials for it. There's always a lesson to be learned from everything that you go through. You're paying the money to learn a lesson and these lessons come in handy. I always look at my time as so valuable, more valuable than what I'm investing something in. Okay, so I'm always looking for ways to save time rather than save money. So when I opened up the channel, and I started investing in myself, then more money came into my life. Before I had a closed channel, I was afraid of investing, I was afraid of buying things that I definitely needed for my business that I knew would help, and therefore the business was stagnant. I was stagnant. So when you open up the channel, you let it flow both ways. You open up the channel by spending, and when you invest, you subconsciously start to see whatever you're investing in as valuable. When I started to invest in my skills and my business, I started to see my skills and my business as important. Then I started to respect myself more. Then my self-esteem went up. Do you see how this is happening? The act of me investing in myself is making me better. And when I become better, better things come into my life. So that was number two, opening up the channel. Number three is a quirky one, but it's quality over quantity. It's what wealthy people do all the time. And this is what made a shift happen in my subconscious mind. What I mean by that is I like to own things that are quality. I like to own nice things. Like I just found this, this is a cigar cutter. I mean, I didn't buy this, but I would probably buy something like this, but it's kind of fancy. Like it's like a hole punch. I don't know. Everything that I buy, it's nice things. I don't buy cheap things because I don't like the way cheap things make me feel because I believe I deserve the best. And to exemplify a story about this, my wife and I, we were gonna go buy her a new car. We were like, all right, you know, this is gonna be a second car. We're only two people and we both work from home. Why the fuck do we need a second car anyways? But I understand it will be valuable for you to have a car because you know sometimes I'm taking it out to golf or like I go other places to friends and you need the car and you, you're pretty much locked up at home. Maybe it could be helpful to have a second car. So let's go ahead and buy one. So if we're gonna buy one, let's buy a cheap one. And so we wanted to settle for like a, like a RAV4, which is not something that we really wanted, but she's driven that in the past and she liked it. And we went to different dealerships and we just saw like how they treated us. It was just like car salesmanship at its finest, right? And we're like, why the fuck are we putting up with this? Why don't we just get a car that we want that make us feel good about ourselves? And when we took a test drive in the RAV4, we didn't quite like it, but we were gonna settle for that car anyways because it was cheaper. But then as soon as I was leaving the dealership, we visited another like a Lexus dealership and they gave us a call. They said, hey, we have the car that you want available. Do you want to test drive it? I saw it as a sign and I was like, okay, you know what? Sure. Test drove it. She loved it. She loved the car and it made her feel good about herself. So I was like, why are we, why are we going to settle for like a cheaper car that's going to make you feel like shit every single day rather than something nice that you drive that makes you feel good, that makes you appreciate it, makes you feel abundant every single day. If you're going to get something, get something that's good, that's, that's nice. Otherwise, don't get it at all. Just don't get it. It's better to have something that's nice than something that's not nice. I would rather have nothing. People and friends, you know, people are like, I just want friends. They don't care about what kind of friends it is. I would rather have no friends than toxic friends, wouldn't you? Those were the three things that I believe really helped me change and make this shift in my subconscious mind to becoming comfortable being wealthy. And uh, I hope this video was helpful for you. Leave me a comment letting me know what you thought of this more casual style where I'm sitting on this couch. If you're new to the channel, make sure you like, comment, subscribe. 
hit that little bell there so you're notified of any new video that I put out. And also, if you'd like to work closer together with me and my team to help you grow your business, what we do is we help entrepreneurs and business owners who are making less than six figures who clearly have a mindset obstacle. We help them eliminate those mindset, those confidence, self-doubt obstacles to help them create a six-figure business. You find that you have all the tactics and strategies that you need, but it's not a tactical or strategic problem. It's clearly an identity problem, a core level, how you view yourself problem. And because of that, you're making poor choices, poor decisions, and you can't stick to what you're doing, you're progressing, you keep doubting yourself, you keep hesitating. All of these things happen because of you, not because of the tactics and strategies you're given. If that sounds like you, you wanna grow your business, click on the link in the description below to apply for an interview with us to see if we're a good fit to work together. And I'm looking forward to speaking with you. Till next time, peace.